Hello, my fellow, my fellow embarrassment of pandas. Welcome back to Panda Propaganda. I'm your host, Christian Valencia, and today we have one thing to talk about. One thing. Ain't gonna, it might take up a lot of time because it's heavy in substance. That is Justice League. Now, I talked about this, I think, last week. Um, Justice League, the original depiction that it was supposed to be released in back in 2017, was released last week on March 18th, 2021. Um, and we'll get into the history of it, of why it was released three years ago, sorry, four years ago, why it was released this year, all that talk, but, sorry. Anyways, let's get right into it. So, in 2017, we were given the movie Justice League. Now, if you don't know, the Justice League is the DC equivalent to the MCU's Marvel's Avengers. Uh, the DC universe is older than the Marvel Cinematic Universe or the Marvel Universe in general. However, due to the just insane popularity of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the DC Universe doesn't get as much attention, which as a person who loves DC more than Marvel, it kind of sucks, but you know, to each their own and a lot of people just 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 prefer Marvel, but it's fine. It's fine, okay, it's fine. But in 2017, we were given the first of hopefully many movies, which was the Justice League. Now, again, the Justice League consists of, at the moment, with the movies, Batman, Flash, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, and Superman. I forgot to put Superman first because Superman is my least favorite hero. If I, if it, when it comes to Batman and Superman, I'm a Batman guy. I'm wearing black. I don't have any Batman shit up in my room, but you know who cares? I'm a Batman guy. I had a Batman wallet. Whenever my barber would argue with me, oh Superman is better, I'd be like, nah, he's scared of a rock. He's scared of a rock. He, it's he's scared of a green, flashy, glowing rock. Now. Every time I make one of these episodes or record one of these episodes, I always have a list of things I talk about, whatever uh, section or whatever subgenre of culture they're coming from. This is all I have. It's backwards. Of course it's backwards because my phone sucks balls. So, it's 2021 and we were given a different theatrical release of the Justice League movie that was released in 2017. Well, why is that? What happened exactly? So in 2017, Zack Snyder was the was directing the version of Justice League we got this week. However, tragedy struck when his daughter Autumn Snyder sadly committed suicide because she was struggling with depression and I believe bipolar disorder. I could be wrong about that, but she sadly committed suicide and Zack Snyder, respectively, had to step down from the project. He wanted to take this film in a different view, but given how he had not finished it and this horrible, tragic thing happened, no one blamed him for stepping down and the di director's position was given to someone else who took the film in a different, uh, different direction. And, you know, it was, a, it was a tough thing for Mr. Snyder to go through. Many were discussing and quite frankly, personally, many were excited about Zack Snyder directing Justice League because he's an incredible director. Not many people agree with his, I guess, form or techniques of directing, but the guy has directed some great movies. And when he had to step down, a lot of people were disappointed because this next guy, well, no one... No, no one... He's not a Zack Snyder... He wasn't going to take, there's no way he was going to take the movie in the direction that Zack Snyder was going to take it. And that's exactly what happened. In 2017, we got maybe a two hour long movie. And the entire plot of the movie itself was just a mess. Uh, DC, of course, in comparison to Marvel, and not even in comparison to Marvel, just in general as a cinematic universe, doesn't really do well with critics or fans. Simply because Marvel has set the standard really high 
and other comic book movies are just failing to meet it. But fast forward a couple years, actually almost half a decade, almost five years, four years later, and Zack Snyder says, you know what? We're back. We are going to release the film I originally had in mind. And of course, of course, people got excited along with myself. Now, I'll be honest. It wasn't until I started conceptualizing this show and started looking for things that were going to happen that I had found out about this. I was kind of disappointed with Justice League, but I liked it at the same time. It it, it wasn't a movie I loved, but it, it, I didn't hate it. It was kind of just there in the background, and it was, it was a good movie. But when I found out that we were going to get a Zack Snyder release, you best believe, your boy celebrated, because... There were talks. Sorry, I'm going to be drinking a lot of water. My mouth's been dry all day. This was going to be a longer movie. Different plot. And more characters. And that's exactly what happened. Spoiler alert. I'm going to be spoiling the movie. If you have not watched the movie, it's on HBO Max. It's a $15 subscription. You can't get a refund. But you can cancel your subscription and have it for the month. They have a lot of good movies on there. The platform itself, the way it renders and loads, it kind of sucks. Because I'll give you my example. I was watching the movie and I turned off my phone to go do laundry. I didn't close the app. Didn't go to a different page. I just clicked the power button and put it to sleep. Came back and it said, oops, have to try something again. And I had to restart the movie. And it loads a lot. But other than that, they have a good choice of movies. So, you know, if you want to watch it, it's on HBO Max. $15 subscription. You can't get a refund. But, again, they have a lot of movies. <sighs> now, let's get into this. So, to start, this movie is four hours long. Four incredible hours. I, I'm sorry, I'm not really liking the angle I put myself on. I didn't want to move my lamp, so I just kind of put myself where it already was. And I'm kind of regretting it, but we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. So, the movie begins where Batman and versus Superman, Dawn of Justice, had left off with Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman fighting the villain Doomsday. And it begins with Superman getting impaled being killed and his scream kind of spreading all over the world people everywhere can hear it and of course superman eventually dies yada 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 fast forward and we skip to batman starting to recruit and assemble the justice league now he begins by recruiting or attempting to recruit i should say because it doesn't go very well he attempts to recruit Aquaman, who, in the winter times, helps this isolated, lonely village by feeding the people because their only source of sustenance is the ocean, which freezes in the winter, so they don't have food. So he's like, oh, hey, guys, here, fish. So Aquaman doesn't necessarily blend amongst the people, but he is kind of just there as a regular person and Bruce Wayne Batman goes to sort of the leader of the village and he says let me talk to this person and how do I put this he's talking to Aquaman knowing he's talking to Aquaman who Aquaman is talking to the leader of the village saying let me talk to Aquaman obviously I'm paraphrasing a lot there because at that point I'm assuming the leader and the village people don't know that Bruce Wayne is talking to Aquaman, nor that they're in the room with Aquaman. But at the same time, he, late, like later, when everything works out and he actually discusses with Aquaman after paying a certain uh, fine, he discusses with Aquaman, okay, this is what's happening, this is what's coming, I need your help, I'm recruiting other people. Aquaman says no. Because he believes fighting solo is the best way someone can fight. They're the strongest by themselves. Blah, blah, blah. And this is the part where I'm kind of confused. Because 
Aquaman descends into the water doing his thing and the village people are right there just singing like a carol and they saw him go into the water so I I don't I don't know it's kind of confusing but anyway next we cut to Wonder Woman in I believe Paris and these group of really stereotypical bad guys dressed in black are about to blow up, as they say, four blocks of a city. And they have a whole school of young children hostage, everyone who works there hostage. And Wonder Woman's like, oh, nah, that shit ain't gonna happen. I don't know why I just said it like that. I apologize. She says, it's not gonna happen. Runs in, kicks everyone's ass, of course, because Wonder Woman is such a fucking badass. I never saw Wonder Woman 1940, whatever the fuck, or the other one. But goddamn, Gal Gadot was just so fucking attractive. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, she kicks everyone's ass, and the briefcase, which is literally a regular-sized briefcase with a bunch of explosives in it, is supposed to blow up four blocks of an entire city? Seriously? I don't... Hmm. Technology is something else, man. But anyways, she runs, kicks everyone's ass, closes the briefcase, grabs it, jumps the leg muscles on these people, I swear, jumps up the roof, through the roof, rather, throws it, it blows up, she gets blasted, and just as the head villain person thing is about to shoot the fuck out of everyone with a really good-looking machine gun, she comes back and starts fucking blocking the bullets with her uh, uh, forearm guards, which, fun fact, those forearm guards are actually protection against her opponent because she's so powerful, they restrain her. <clears throat> Tip of the day, or fact of the day, however you want to take that, that's what those are for. So she ends up blocking every single bullet, saving people, getting them out of the way, uh, clings her forearm guards together, and the guy... The head villain master person thing dies. And this hat lands in the cop car down below. She says, hey, everyone, are you okay? Blah, blah, blah. And this little girl's like, I want to be like you one day. And like on the outside, Wonder Woman says, you can be anything you want. But on the inside, we all know she's saying, go fuck yourself. You're never going to be an Amazon. <sighs> so, now, <laughs> so now we fast forward to the main villain, Steppenwolf. Attempting to gather all three mother boxes. Now, the mother boxes in the movie, there's three of them. What they are, are the oldest forms of matter in the universe. And when put together, they form something called the unity. What the unity does is assist an invader. And I'm basing this off the movie, what they, what they said. They assist an invader by scorching the planet in fire cleaning it, cleansing it, and replicating the planet to look like the home planet of the invader, and anyone who lives becomes a parademon, which is someone who is living, but they have no emotion, nothing, they're simply a slave of war. <clears throat> that's what the unity does, and that's what Steppenwolf, uh, um, a servant, a willing servant of Darkseid, is after. Now, for the context of the movie, the primary antagonist is Steppenwolf. He is a servant of the Thanos of the DC the DCEU Darkseid. Darkseid is the most powerful villain in the DCEU. And what the story behind Steppenwolf and Darkseid is it isn't explained exactly what happened, but Steppenwolf betrayed Darkseid and Darkseid said, "Okay, if you want my trust again, go get Go banish, obliterate, whatever they say, around 50,000 worlds. Or, sorry, more than 50,000 worlds. But in the movie, he said, you still need 50,000 more. So, as he's doing all his obliterating, cleansing, whatever, whatever, he comes across Earth. Now, 5,000 years ago, in the time of the movie, there was a war. 5,000 years ago. Between... Darkseid and his army against 
the Atlanteans, the Amazonians, man, the Green Lanterns, and the gods, specifically Zeus and Ares. Ares is the god of war, and Zeus is his father, the god of the gods, or king of the gods, sorry. So it was those five groups against Darkseid and his gigantic ass army. As Darkseid had already claimed 100,000 worlds, it was safe to say that he had the strongest army in the universe. <clears throat> And to him, Earth was just another world that he was going to take over to expand and eventually find what he was looking for, which is the anti-life equation, which I personally don't know what it is, but it's talked about a lot in the movie. They never say what it is, but he's looking for it. And once he finds it, he's going to become the most powerful being in the world. Now, during the war, Darkseid had all three mother boxes. He had acquired them from different societies and... With the help of the sorcerers who maintained and worshipped the boxes, he was about to, literally, seconds away from the boxes unifying, about to scorch and cleanse Earth of all Atlanteans, humans, Amazonians, everyone. Everyone would have been gone. However, the defenders of Earth prospered and murdered all of the sorcerers who were commanding the mother boxes obliterated a good amount of Darkseid's army, <clears throat> and nearly killed Darkseid himself. However, his parademons carried him back into the chopper, because it looks like a chopper in the movie, and he lived to fight another day. Now, it's because of their ability to separate the unification of the boxes that eventually Darkseid and his army have to retreat. And in the retreat, they end up leaving the mother boxes. <clears throat> now, it was decided with man at... Atlanteans and Amazonians that each culture would take a box and hide it and bury it the way that their culture would allow it to. So they won for now. They won for now. Fast forward to the present day and Steppenwolf is looking for the boxes. He's betrayed Darkseid. He wants his trust again and to him Earth is just another place that he's going to take over but he doesn't know that Darkseid was originally there and he failed and Darkseid doesn't know he's going there so there's no heads up and it's a very fair advantage for the defenders of earth aka the justice league in the present day <clears throat> so the first step for Steppenwolf is the Amazonians now in all three aspects sorry in all three cultures that hid the mother boxes at first, I think man was the weakest solely because the Amazon the Amazonians trained like hundreds of women to stare at this thing all day and guard it with their lives. More than likely not doing anything else, just staring at this thing and ready to attack anyone who's ready to take it. The Atlanteans had the same thing. They had guards in and outside of the building, just staring at this thing, waiting for someone to attack and defend it. And man just buried it. No, seriously. They they just took it. They looked at it for a little bit. Let's bury it. Alright. Let's go get some beer. Of course, it didn't go like that. But in the movie, it just shows man burying the box. And I thought, well, okay. If and when they ever come back for it. That's going to be super fucking easy to find because no one's protecting it. Fast forward to the present day. And in 1944, I, oh no, towards the end of the Second World War, so 1945, the Nazis had found the box because guess what? It was just buried. They didn't do anything else with it. The Nazis had found the box and labeled it 61982. <clears throat> And after they had lost the war, the United States and the Allies had confiscated a lot of their relics and whatnot, and the United States took the box. And in the Pentagon archives, they sealed it away with no use. Now, I'll fast forward to the present day, and there's a Xeno scientific research team, and they got the box back, opened it up, and they knew that it was... It wasn't of origin on Earth, so that's why they kept studying it. <clears throat> By this point, Steppenwolf has already gotten 
the first mother box from the Amazonians. It's because the fatal flaw that the Amazonians had, and this is something that Sippin' Wolf doesn't, it doesn't, it's not an obstacle towards him because the way he gets to the boxes is simply he transitions himself through space-time to get himself into any room. But the the weakness of the Amazonians is that they were extremely primal. They aren't as technologically advanced as the other societies. And they put up one hell of a fight. Steppenwolf was close so many times and they got it out of his hand so many times. However, the queen simply wasn't strong enough to fight against him. And her emotional weakness to save another Amazon who eventually died a couple minutes later. The Amazonian that she tried to save died and Steppenwolf got the box. So that's the first box Steppenwolf had. Holy crap, this might be a long episode. <laughs> I'm going to skip a lot of the details because I think it, I, I won't do it justice here. You should really go watch the movie. Two, the second box. Um, by this point, Aquaman has already talked with one of the servants of the kings. It might have been his father. I really couldn't tell because I didn't see the Aquaman, the Aquaman movie. Saying, you're a king. You have to help us. This guy is... If he gets these boxes, we're all screwed. And I'm, and Aquaman's just saying, Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. I don't like Atlanteans. Even though I'm half Atlantean, I don't like them because my mother abandoned me. Yeah, she was with the queen and whatnot, but it ain't going to happen. Bye. So... Eventually, the second box within the Atlant the Atlanteans guarding awakens, and it starts making noise. Now, the advantage that Steppenwolf has, along with his army, is that once the box waken awakens, they can see it. I don't know how that works, but they can see it, they can track it down. He comes for the box, and again, the Atlanteans put up one hell of a fight. Seriously, I mean, he kills a lot of them. He really does. And he almost dies, but he gets his ass kicked. I mean, uh, Aquaman gets his ass kicked by Steppenwolf, and he takes the box and leaves. And, yeah, the adopted daughter of Aquaman's mother assures him, if you really wanted to be a hero, your mom, the queen, who has since passed away, would go after that man to the surface and get the box back. So he, he looks like he looks all puzzled and mysterious. And he just walks away and eventually swims. Like, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> it's at this point that the Justice League is starting to become assembled. The Flash, Wonder Woman, and Batman have already been assembled. Uh, Wonder Woman is trying to convince Cyborg to join the team. Uh, Bruce Wayne, aka Batman, has still failed to convince Aquaman to join the team, but given the conversation he had with the adopted stepdaughter of the Queen, it's more, of course, he's going to join, but it's safe to say at that, at that point in time, he's going to join the team and really strengthen the numbers. And now, they just need Superman. And this is what happens. Because Cyborg had a, was literally the son of the man studying the Xenoscience the, the, the son of the father leading the Xenoscience research, he had easy access to the box. Now, eventually, at some point before the events of the movie, the father, aka the lead scientist, had taken the box home because he thought it was not safe at the, at the research lab. So it was at home with Cyborg, who has at this point already become a robot, and Cyborg has the box. To keep it safe. Um, once they're made aware of, once they're made aware of what's going on with the boxes, they do not let them. They they don't let it out of their sight. I can't talk today. I'm sorry. But they realize because this box helps transform Cyborg to what he is, essentially saving his life. He was on the verge of death, and his father, not knowing what technology he was messing around with, used it to save Cyborg's life. Cyborg. Brings the idea, we could bring back Superman like this. The way my father 
helped save my life. And they eventually do. They go to Superman's ship, which is just full of living liquid. It's a yellow cerebral fluid looking like thing. <clears throat> and going the speed of light, Flash gains enough electrical charge to touch the box, reviving Superman. And this is a different scene from the original Justice League movie because he doesn't pick up Batman and just like throw him like he's a doll going towards Lois Lane. He's about to kick Batman's ass and the Lois Lane is like, No! Don't kill him! I'm your wife! I didn't say yes at the time, but I'm wearing it! <laughs> it doesn't. That's not the conversation. If that were the conversation, that'd be fucking hilarious. But he comes down, hugs her, and they take off. Batman's like, What the fuck? Her. <laughs> There's something mentally wrong with me. I apologize. But... It's at this point, because the box revived Superman, it kind of, ex everything went into a huge explosion, and the box flew out, and the father, the elite scientist, grabs the box and goes into the research facility. Now, why he took the box at that point in time doesn't seem like a smart move. It doesn't seem like, oh, wait, why, why, why is he doing this? What the hell? But he's aware of what's going on. And knows that someone, someone who should have the box, is coming for the box. So it goes into the lab, and he starts hitting it with an electron laser. Now this is important because earlier in the film, they had used that same electron laser to make it the hottest thing on Earth at 3.5 million Kelvin. Now, you could be saying, because I know I was, like, why the hell was he shooting it? He just killed himself to heat up this thing, and Steppenwolf gets the third and final box. He takes the box, and he, he, and he leaves. He dips, not the drug. But, of course, the father hit it with the electron laser, he died, and the box is superheated. Now, Batman, sorry, Aquaman, and Cyborg discuss, okay, he did that because it's the hottest thing on Earth, so it should show up on an infrared satellite and Batman's like I have a satellite Flash is like you have a satellite Batman's like yeah I have six of course he has fucking six satellites he's the richest man I think in the world I don't know how the how the currency in the DCEU works but the man has money okay he, he's rich he's like <laughs> he doesn't have a mustache but anyways they look at the infrared uh words infrared satellite and find that not only find the box find the other two boxes and they find Steppenwolf's hideout at this point Superman is already revived and he tells his mom and Lois Lane hey they revived me for a reason I'm gonna find go find out why and once I find out why I'm gonna act on it he comes back in not his blue and red and yellow suit no 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 he comes back in his gray and black suit and oh my lord <sighs> It's such a, it looks like a great suit. I, sometimes I look at Henry Cavill, which is the actor who plays Superman, and I just, let me have your body. You can take mine, you can work for it again, and let me just have the shreddedness that you have. Like, give it to me. Please. Because, goddamn. The, that guy probably doesn't eat carbs anymore, and it sucks. I feel bad for him because the carbs are delicious. I'm getting off topic. Anyways. So at this point, Superman is already revived, and he says to his parents, oh, I mean to his mom, I need to go, I'll be back eventually. Now they find Steppenwolf's hideout, and there the battle ensues. Cyborg's goal, because he was made of the mother boxes, his goal is to, set, is to prevent the mother boxes from unifying, which of course we have already discussed, will scorch the earth and cleanse it, and say bye bye to everyone on planet earth including the defenders of earth so that's his goal to do that he needs flash to tr supercharge going faster than the speed of light and because cyborg is all metal conduct the electricity to him giving him the power to separate the mother boxes now that's way easier said than done because at this at this point in time there's only five of them aquaman has already joined Superman isn't there yet, so Batman distracts all the parademons while the other three 
while the other three wait am i doing my math wrong okay so it was batman aquaman cyborg wonder woman and so while the other four excuse me go towards the base help batman defeat any pair of demons that they can make it easier steppenwolf is there fighting their asses like he's not letting them and throughout this whole period by the time they get to the tower cyborg is just trying to separate the boxes everyone's fighting the pair of demons so it's really only cyborg and flash fighting or sorry not fighting but really working towards separating the mother boxes because at this point steppenwolf has already combined them and they are super close to unifying now this is where things kind of take a turn for the worse a pair of demon that no one saw shoots Flash. And the amount of time he was just spending running, charging up, goes to waste. So that sucks. Eventually Batman sees him, shoots him in the head, he dies. And now Flash is bleeding, but somehow he heals himself. And Cyborg is on the brink of... A, he's on the brink of almost losing the power to separate the, the the boxes he's so close to letting the boxes unify it's almost kind of scary it had me on the edge of my seat and i was laying down which is kind of weird but flash gains the motivation to do so and within a minute he goes faster than the speed of light conducts electricity and before he had gone to the speed of light the boxes had unified and I know I said they were close to, I forgot to mention, they did unify. And the earth was beginning to scorch. Luckily, there was no one around, so we don't see anyone get turned to a parademon. But the earth was beginning to scorch, and somehow Flash managed to get into the speed of light, conduct the electricity to Cyborg, and with, along with Superman's strength, they separated the boxes and they undid the scorching, which is kind of cool. By this point, the portal, Darkseid, was in because he's on he's on his home planet the portal opens up and you can see dark side Syed, and a whole fuck ass of pair of demons behind them just ready to fight now superman at this point has already arrived and he kicks steppenwolf's ass he cuts off one of his horns i, I believe it's the right horn he cuts off takes off his armor and just is beating his ass fucking lasering his ass his face, not his ass, literally. But he he's he's winning. He's kicking Steppenwolf's ass. And just as Steppenwolf is about to go back with Darkseid, Aquaman pulls his tri uh, sorry, stabs his trident through Steppenwolf, and Wonder Woman doing the honors cuts off Steppenwolf's head. Now both the body and Steppenwolf's head go through the portal, the portal closes. So Darkseid, Syed, and the army are stuck in their homeworld for another day. The Justice League wins. <clears throat> However, Darkseid crushes Steppenwolf's head because he failed him. Again. And this is where it this is where I thought the movie was gonna end, but it doesn't. It goes on for like another 15 minutes. <sighs> Crushes his head, and they said, we're going to go get the anti-life equation the old way. We're just going to fly there. And that's where the present day kind of ends. Now it cuts to a scene. It cuts to the scene, the nightmare that Batman had in um, uh, Batman vs. Superman Donna Justice, except he's with different members of the Justice League. It's... The Queen's adopted daughter, a.k.a. Um, Aquaman's stepsister, Cyborg, an assassin, and the Joker is there. Jared Leto's Joker. And he makes a deal with Batman, a truce, that they're on the same team. And throughout this whole time, they're trying, they're trying to say, we need to get out of the open so he can't see us. We can't be caught because he'll, he'll kill us. And... No one would blame you if you think that they're talking about Darkseid, but they're talking about corrupt, evil Superman because they've been there for so long, Batman and Joker bickering back and forth, that he has time to find them, and in his black and gray suit, Superman comes down with flaming red eyes and is about to kill them, and it was all 
part of Batman's dream. <clears throat> One thing I forgot to mention is in maybe literally halfway through the movie, they introduce the Martian Manhunter. Now, he doesn't play a critical... He plays a critical role, actually, in convincing Lois Lane, disguised as Superman's mom, to come back into the world because she had sort of fallen into a depression after Superman died and kind of just left the world. But... Uh, sorry. But he said, disguised as the mom, you need to come back because the world needs a reporter. People need you. So she comes back, and as he's leaving... He gets out of his shape-shifting shape sort of phase of the mom, goes back into his green alien form, and leaves. Now, after Batman wakes up from his nightmare, his vision of the Joker, evil Superman, yada, 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 he comes to Batman and says, Look, it's, it's, it's coming. There's a war. We need to be prepared. And Batman says, You're always welcome to join the Justice League, for some paraphrasing again. And he says, okay, I'll see you around. And one thing I completely forgot is Lex Luthor. So before the Batman vision, the Batman nightmare, it cuts to Arkham Asylum. And this man in Lex Luthor's place, a guard goes to get him because he's not leaving his cage. <laughs> his cell, sorry. It's a cage because they're criminals. And he says, Lex Luthor, let's go. He turns around and it's not fucking Lex Luthor. It's not Lex Luthor. The genius escaped. Of course he escaped. He's a fucking genius. So it cuts to Lex Luthor on a boat celebrating celebrating Superman being revived. He's bald at this point and is still played by Jesse Eisenberg. I believe that's his name. I completely forget. So I apologize if I'm butchering his name. And some something absolutely no one expected. Slade Wilson. Yep. He talks to Lex Luthor about assassinating Batman for free because his quarrels with Batman, a.k.a. Bruce Wayne, are personal. Now, what Slade Wilson doesn't know is that Lex Luthor knows Batman's real identity, which is, he ends up telling him, his name is Bruce Wayne. <clears throat> Use that to your advantage. And that is where the movie ends. Now, my thoughts are... Of course this movie was better than the 2017 one. Are you kidding me? I spent six hours watching this four-hour movie because there were so many funny moments in it. I was just rewinding it. I was really trying to break down what, what was going on. And overall, this movie is just freaking incredible. It really, congrats to Zack Snyder for overcoming such a tragedy because at the end, he says for Autumn, which is his daughter that sadly committed suicide, who passed away... Congrats to him for overcoming such an obstacle and making this great movie. I'm sorry I kept you for so long. If you actually watched the end of this, I appreciate you. But that will conclude today's episode. If you haven't already, go follow the Instagram at underscore panda propaganda underscore. And I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video with some actual news. Deuces.